Okay, hi all, welcome back to another video on wildfire, which is the wildfire part two, uh, which is really just looking at logs, and we're gonna look and see how we can, we can you know, verify that things have been, have been downloaded or not been downloaded, and how secure those configurations actually make our, our users. So we've got a test sample malware file, which is the one we're gonna use here, which we had before. We have ransomware malware samples, which is a GitHub site, and that can be, so you can download uh, ransomware and, and other malware samples from there. And if we just refresh our memory on our policy, so on our policy we have the, it's the allow internet policy we're using and we've got the wildfire file blocking and antivirus configured on there. We don't have URL filtering as yet. Okay, so let's quickly look at the logs. So we have the wildfire submission logs, which as we said before is um, the function of this page. The function of this page is to every single one has a unique hash, has a unique SHA-256 hash value. So the idea behind that is that every single time you go to download that, the, um, the firewall will have to send that off as a wildfire submission because it hasn't seen it before. What we have seen is what we have seen is when we come back here, we can see that that isn't always the case. And I suspect that's more to do with the um, more to do with the, the speed of which I'm continually testing these, um, these links. I don't think that's actually keeping up with it rather than anything else. However, we do see, specifically in a test earlier on, that it didn't have the hash for PuttyGen or PSFTP. So it sent them off and they come back as, as benign. Okay. So that will tell you that your wildfire submissions are working this log here specifically, and it will give you a, it will give you a verdict, and it will give you an action whether it's allowed or not. The logs that are really important are data filtering and the threat logs in this particular instance. So our data filtering logs are the ones that are going to tell us uh, what the file was and um, whether you know it, it was denied or continue or block continue. And a quick, so there, so. The block continue is if you get the block page. So if we go back to our, go back to our thing here, open the new tab. So when we get file download blocked, although the page hasn't actually got there, we go. So when we get file download blocked, that is a a block. That is a block continue action there. And if we were to continue, then after that we'd get continue actions because there is a there's a period of time after that where you can download files as a result of that that um, that block continue. The shortest time I found is about four or five minutes. That then times out, and then you can uh, it, you then get the block page again. Um, just as a side note, it does not seem to be attached to to this. Um, this is the URL continue timeout, so if you do a continue on URL then you get 15 minutes for that category. doesn't seem to be attached to that. Okay, so that's, that's those logs there. And then we have the threat logs here, which are the threat logs are going to give you the, the, the threat log where it's been found. Then we're going to go quickly through. So ML virus is a machine learning virus found, um, machine learning found virus, sorry, if we're going to read that verbatim. And that's, it was sent off and it's a machine learning uh, that's, that's found that. That's, that is you know, that's been sent off and it's been looked at and it's, you know, um, been categorized as a virus. And that was reset both. So specifically that was over port 80, which I believe if we come back to our, and open this one here. Okay, so now we've got file download blocked, but when we go to continue it, we can see here that we've got, it couldn't download because of a network issue. Coming back to our firewall, we reset it, we can, so we can see now 11.42, which is what this one is, and then the reset both action, that's the antivirus action that was taken as a result of that threat. Look further down, we've got wildfire virus, that's come from the wildfire database that's downloaded. We have virus, which is the antivirus database, so that's already existing in there. And then we have some scan threats there, which are, are more packet based and host sweeps and things like this. So when you're setting up your own protection profiles and reconnaissance protection, that's where this comes from. And that can be very sensitive, so sometimes I actually filter that out. So 
just to refresh our memory again about the, the policy, so we're going to look at the policy, and the policy again has got, it's got the file blocking in there, and we've actually edited the file blocking um, policy to include EXEs, so that we can look at a real world um, example, which is downloading an EXE from the PuTTY site, so we'll do that now. So if we go to download PuTTY, the latest, and um, what we should get is we should get a file download blocked and that is then blocked um, and just to demonstrate that so if that's blocked so if we just go back and we go for plink we'll get file download blocked if we continue that so we continue that then we can see that we do actually have the file and you can still see plenty from before from testing to make sure that it's absolutely bang on so it's 910k which is all good and then if we go back to here and we go for psftp then that then comes down the same as well and it's, it's you know it's an exe it could harm your device which is something you get anyway from from the browser um, but then if we look at that again in the file and no i can click on that little file icon there but i choose not to um, we see again that that is that is the full file. Now, if you come back to that after five minutes, then that will not be that will not be the case. You'll get that block action again. So that was really just to sort of go into the the logs, um, the logs that we can see. So remember, data filtering is going to help us with our, our data logs. This is where we can see we can see the logs here, the wildfire uh, test PE file, um, and the continue actions, and the block continue actions. This is on Panorama, so it's running a little bit behind because it has to be logged first. Uh, URL filtering so isn't really part of this because we haven't got URL filtering configured. If we did, we'd be able to see URL filtering logs for this as well. And then threat, and then threat is where your anti your antivirus uh, logs are going to be, and that's where we can see the type of virus, the time it was generated, the threat ID name. We can look further into that log as well, and we can look to see whether it's a false positive. Um, an interesting thing is is the the file names as well. So, taking these from taking these from um, the GitHub downloading. So, if we do that test quickly, we we'll go to malware samples and pick say the next one down. So, the next one down is C one two nine F and then view raw. And again, it looks like it's come down. And hopefully, as long as I'm not about to be completely stitched up, that should be an empty file. And indeed, it is an empty file. And then on here, so if we come back now to the firewall, so we come back to the firewall, I'm going to see now that that is our that is our log for that file. And we've got the GitHub downloading application. We've got the reset both, um, and then we have the file name. An interesting side note is, as you can see, so the end of that is 4C129. Uh, if we uh, open it like that, we can see that we can copy it from there. But that isn't the whole that isn't the whole file because if we go back to our monitor, we can see that it's one two nine F. In fact, not quite sure why that is. Okay, so that's it. So that's really it. So we can see the wildfire virus working. We can see the antivirus working. We can see where we've got the machine learning has been. Um, has been utilized in order to, to block something and not let anything through. Our wildfire submissions are anything that's being sent off to wildfire. Uh, again, it's pulled PSFTP and PLink. Not quite sure why it keeps pulling them. Um, but then, I mean, you do have you do have the time for it to, to update once it's, once it's found a signature. So that was it. That was really quickly going through it. I hope that's cleared it up. Um, and I hope it's given you a bit more of an idea of when you create policies, how they how they end up looking and how wildfire works. So please, please, please like and subscribe. It does help. I know it sounds cheesy, but it does genuinely help. And I'll see you in the next video.